There is one guilty pleasure that I really don't feel guilty about at all disaster movies. For some reason, ever since I was a child, my eyes have always drifted to these cheesy, over-the-top special effects fests that show exactly what could happen if Mother Nature decides she's had enough. So let's take a look at the 10 films that I feel are my favorite disaster movies. Number 10, The Day After Tomorrow. A list of disaster movies just would not be complete without the king of disaster himself, director Roland Emmerich. The first of two of his films on my list, The Day After Tomorrow, is all about the consequences of global warming. Melting of gigantic glaciers in the northern part of the world causes a change in the ocean so catastrophic it results in incredible extreme weather events. This sees a blizzard in India, a hailstorm in Japan, tornadoes in Los Angeles, and a thunderstorm so severe it causes a gigantic wave to crash through New York City. This is all followed by a colossal hurricane-like blizzard that can freeze you to death within seconds. None of it is scientifically accurate, of course, but it makes for a highly entertaining spectacle. Plus, it stars Dennis Quaid, Ian Holm, and Jake Gyllenhaal. So much fun. Number nine. Knowing. This disaster film is quite different from the other films on my list. It incorporates a somewhat supernatural element and heavy sci-fi notes towards the end. But it is about disasters leading up to the end of the world, so I'd say it qualifies. Knowing stars Nicolas Cage being his awesome and captivating self as John Kessler, an MIT professor. His son comes into possession of a list of numbers that were pulled out of a school's time capsule. Kessler soon discovers that the numbers correlate to every single disaster in human history and he sets out to prevent the forthcoming ones from happening. The action sequences in this film are very well shot and put together, making for some very confronting scenes. Especially the moment when a large passenger jet flies overhead Kessler right before it crashes. But it is the gut-wrenching finale to this film that makes sure knowing sticks with you. Number 8. The Impossible the only film on my list based on true events, The Impossible, is simply incredible. The film recounts the actual events that happened to a single family vacationing in Thailand during the time of the 2004 Boxing Day tsunami. Naomi Watts was nominated for Best Actress for her role as Mother Maria, understandably, as I was blown away by her performance. Another actor in this film who was just phenomenal was none other than a young Spider-Man himself, Tom Holland. He was beyond outstanding as the eldest son, Lucas, and only 15 years old at the time of filming. But the thing that stuck with me the most was the handling of the initial disaster itself. My jaw dropped as I watched the giant wall of water that crashed through the resort and took out absolutely everything in its path and witnessing the struggle of Maria and Lucas desperately trying to reach each other through the water had me holding my breath. Number seven, The Core. Released in 2003, this end of the world disaster film is usually one that's overlooked, but I've always enjoyed it. The Earth's core has stopped spinning and the planet's electromagnetic shield is on the verge of collapse. A group of scientists and astronauts led by Aaron Eckhart's Dr. Josh Keyes and Hilary Swank's Major Beck Childs must descend into the Earth in order to save us. The only drawback to this film is that the CGI is a bit of a disaster, get it, during some of the more catastrophic scenes. Nonetheless, the cast is extremely likeable. Even the film's antagonist, Dr. Konrad Zimski, played wonderfully by the excellent Stanley Tucci. The bulk of the movie is set beneath the Earth's surface, and the story keeps finding new and thrilling ways to maintain the attention of the audience. The core is one hell of a ride. Number six, 2012. The second Roland Emmerich film on my list sees the Mayan prophecy about the end of the world fulfilled. 2012 depicts solar flares that cause the Earth's core to heat rapidly, which leads to Earth crust displacement. This is a cataclysmic event which sees incredible shifting of the tectonic plates, causing insane earthquakes, volcanoes, and floods. The special effects showed this perfectly, and it is simply jaw-dropping to watch. Even 10 years later, the CGI still holds up. California crumbles into the Pacific Ocean, Yellowstone National Park becomes a super volcano, and tidal waves like you've never seen before crash over mountains in the Himalayas. 
Yet somehow, John Cusack's Jackson Curtis and his family managed to survive every single one of these disasters. Probably the most unrealistic thing in the whole movie. Number five, Armageddon. Michael Bay tackling the end of the world? Sounds like a perfect match to me. Released in 1998, two months after a very similar film by the name of Deep Impact hit theaters. Armageddon tells the story of a giant asteroid the size of Texas heading straight for us and with only 18 days until impact. NASA recruits a group of the world's finest oil drillers to put a hole in the big rock and blow it to hell with a nuclear weapon. The plot is almost identical to that of Deep Impact, yet there are enough differences in the story to separate the two films. Armageddon features an all-star cast featuring Bruce Willis, Billy Bob Thornton, Liv Tyler and Ben Affleck. But the standout performer for me is Steve Buscemi, who is absolutely hilarious as the genius rockhound. I adore the heroic and bittersweet music that scores this film, and who could forget Aerosmith's epic power ballad, Don't Wanna Miss a Thing. Armageddon was the highest grossing film of 1998 for a reason. Number four, Volcano. If anyone had ever wondered what a volcano in the middle of Los Angeles would look like, this film made their dreams come true. Released in 1997, Volcano gave us fiery destruction as the streets of LA were covered in a river of lava. According to the science of the film, this was caused by earthquakes that allowed the magma to rise up through the cracks. Tommy Lee Jones basically reprises his role as US Marshal Samuel Gerard from The Fugitive and I love every second of it. Few actors play heroic men of authority better than Jones. He commands a strong presence that has you hanging on his every word. I really enjoy the female cast of this film as well, in particular Anne Heche and Jacqueline Kim. They stand as two brave women battling the volcano in different ways, managing to save countless lives. Number three, Dante's Peak. Ah, uh, Pierce Brosnan, making volcanologists sexy since 1997. Released in March of that year and three months before Volcano, Dante's Peak is a slightly more realistic and perilous ride. Brosnan portrays Harry Dalton, who, along with a team of volcanologists, head to the small town of Dante's Peak to take a look at their so-called dormant volcano. Harry is convinced from the beginning that she will blow, yet everyone else remains skeptical until it's too late. Aside from the devastating eruption of the volcano, the B-plot of the film is actually a really sweet love story between Harry and the mayor of Dante's Peak, Rachel Wando, played by Linda Hamilton. They have a natural on-screen chemistry together, so I for one was very pleased to see them get a happy ending. Dante's Peak does a brilliant job of showing the unimaginable power and destruction that volcanoes cause. Number two, Deep Impact. Of the two comet slash asteroid films that were released in 1998, really what was with the copycat disaster films in the late 90s? This one will always be my favorite. Deep Impact is regarded as the more scientifically accurate of the two and doesn't need Michael Bay around to blow things up. Director Mimi Leder helms an apocalyptic sci-fi drama that takes place over the course of two years. It starts with the discovery of the comet by Leo Biederman, played by Elijah Wood, and ends with the impact of said comet. The dramatic build-up and pacing is handled beautifully, and all of the characters are warm and pleasant. Particularly, Taya Leone's news reporter Jenny Lerner and Robert Duvall's astronaut Spurgeon Tanner. But the climax of the film will leave you breathless. Watching the comet strike the ocean, sending a gigantic wave at incredible speeds across the planet is simply harrowing. Honorable mentions. Geostorm. A weather disaster film that actually prevents the title of the film from even happening. A bit misleading there, guys. San Andreas. Dwayne Johnson gets his own disaster movie because why the hell not? Also, Kylie Minogue? Into the Storm, a found footage disaster movie. A sentence like that would usually send me into overdrive, but unfortunately this film did not live up to that hype. So close though, so close. And my number one favorite disaster movie is Twister. 
Not only is this my favourite disaster movie, but it has to be one of my favourite movies of all time. Twister follows a group of storm chasers led by Joe, played by Helen Hunt, and Bill, played by the late, great Bill Paxton. They have together designed new technology that will help understand how tornadoes work and improve warning systems. Only trouble is Bill needs Joe to sign off on their divorce so he can marry Melissa, played by Jamie Gertz, who is not at all into storm chasing, as we soon find out. There's also a rival team of chasers, with Carrie Elwes' Jonas at the helm. He stole Bill and Joe's tech idea in order to further his career, and it's a race against time to see who triumphs. As the film progresses, so do the intensity of the tornadoes, with each one higher than the last on the Fujita scale. The beautiful score of this film does so well to amplify the majesty and the terror that these twisters bring. Oh, and I have to mention the late Philip Seymour Hoffman, who is outstanding as the wacky Dusty. Watching him be his loony self on screen, calling Bill the extreme, always puts a smile on my face. Helen Hunt and Bill Paxton's performances are also wonderful, and they make for a great on-screen duo. All of these things combined to make Twister my favourite disaster movie ever. There you go guys, those are my top 10 favourite disaster movies ever. Let me know what you think by leaving a comment below and don't forget to like, share and subscribe to Fred the Alien for more videos just like this one. You can also find me on SoundCloud and iTunes as one of the hosts of a podcast called Fred and the Monthly at Winifred's. I've been a Kendall Richardson and you've just experienced collectible chaos.